Y'all ready for the word tonight? Lift your Bibles out. Let's make our confession of faith together. We're starting a brand new series tonight, and I'm excited about it. You ready? Let's go. I'm in my year of more. God will do more in me. God will do more through me. God will do more for me. In Jesus' name, amen. So we say, Lord, have your way. Get the glory out of everything tonight. We are open and we are ready. Speak, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. On your way to your seat, just have five, two or three people and just say, God's about to speak to you. God's about to speak to you. God's about to speak to you online. Type it in the comments and let me get you to share online. When you share, people get saved. God's about to speak to you. Let's get into this series tonight. So listen, we just finished up our last series called Unusual. And because not only was that month unusual, but the rest of your days will be unusual. You're not common. You're not regular. You're not like everybody else. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to celebrate your difference. Watch me. I don't want you. Watch me. Wait, wait a minute. Before you celebrate it, I want you to think about every time you wish you were somebody else. Every time that you wish you could have behaved like somebody else, looked like somebody else, grown up where somebody else did, talk like somebody else, walk like somebody else. And then I want you to think about how when God made you, watch me, there was nobody else exactly like you. And he sent you to the earth for the time that you were needed most because there's a problem in the earth that you were sent to solve. And can't nobody do what you do when you do how you do when you do what you do when you do it. I want you to celebrate your difference when I count to three. One, two, three, shout right there. Come on, come on. Just high five somebody. Say, you're different. And you're not like everybody else. You're unusual. We ended that series from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. This is where we were on Sunday. He is a new. Say, I'm new which means everything about you is new and this is the challenge some of you are having is that God is always making you new and you're trying to hold on to old he's all, watch me watch me today is a brand new new tomorrow's gonna be a brand new new the day after that's gonna be a brand new new you cannot keep holding on to the way you used to be how you used to talk how you used to walk watch me don't even have people around you that remind you of who you used to be how you used to walk, how you used to talk, how you used to act. Why? Because I'm in Christ, which means every day he's doing something new in me, which means I can never tell God, this is just how I am. You are lie. That's how you were. He's making you something new. Yesterday, you maybe walked by fear, but today is a new day. Yesterday, you maybe had doubt, but today is a new day. Yesterday, maybe you walked around with your head down and depression and anxiety, but he's making you new if anyone in Christ he is a new creation do you know what this means this means that God says everything about you I'm creating it like it's new which means I didn't just create you but then everything about you I'm creating you like you're new which means here's your mindset your mindset can never be this is just how I am look at somebody say you won't grow like that uh uh if you if you I'm, this is how I'm this I'm 50 this is how I am I'm 60 that's just how I am then you're gonna die like that watch me I'm 70 this is how I am I'm setting my ways no you're not watch me you're just stubborn and I came tonight to get somebody out of your stubborn place and your stubborn position because if any man be in Christ he's new which means maybe I couldn't do it yesterday but watch me do it today maybe I was too scared to do it in 23 but baby you about to watch me do it in 24 maybe I let the devil talk me out of it last week but you're about to watch me do it now because I am a new creation if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation look at this old things have passed away death and burial death and burial when something passes away what do we do we bury it and the problem many of you have is you have dead bodies in your house Y'all ain't gonna talk. You have dead bodies in your car. You have dead bodies around you and because you won't bury something that needs to finally be buried Watch me, because you keep hoping he's going to bring back to life what he killed. Let's go. Watch me. He says, old things have passed away. Look at me. There's certain things you're just going to have to let die, and you're going to have to bury that thing. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Watch me. Let people talk to you. And here's what people try to do. Well, you know, you used to do this. I'm glad you brought that up, because I sure did used to that. In fact, it's a whole lot of stuff you didn't even know, because I was good at y'all ain't gonna say nothing but let the redeemed of the lord say so if any man be in christ he is a new creation all things are passed away and once something passes away i have to bury it and once i bury it it's illegal to dig it up without a permit 
So what do you need to bury that you keep resuscitating? And now you got zombies. This is why some of y'all, watch me, you won't even give God praise. You're a zombie. Why? Because all you're doing is walking around like a dead person. My mama said I can't do this. My daddy said I can't do this. My sister won't let me do this. The man won't let me do this. Well, I failed at this. Well, I need you to touch somebody close to you and tell them, say, you are new. You are Come on, type it in the comments. You are new. You are new. Old things are passed away. Behold. In other words, pay attention. Look at this. All things. How many of them? All, All things have become new, which means everything about you, God says, I'm making it new. This is why for some of you, watch me, that as, you can, as he continues to make you new, because he's making you new every day. So every day when you're like, I'm finally good, I'm fin he's like, nope, I'm going to do something new. Every day when you're like, oh, I finally feel like I figured it out. Nope, I'm going to do something new. Every day you feel like, God, I finally got it. Nope, I'm going to do something new. Watch me. All things have become what? New. How many things? All things. Here's the challenge. For many of you, you have people who are okay with certain things about you becoming new. But they're not okay with all of you becoming new. And I need you to just lift your hands in the building and the line. Say, everything about me is becoming new. I See, you used to be in debt. That was the old you. Let's talk. You, you used to be running behind people that didn't want you, but that was the old you. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. You used to be in depression, but that was the old you. You used to walk around and let a doctor's diagnosis define you until you realize they practice medicine, not healing. Ah! Which means thank you for what you told me, but you do not have the final say. You do not get the final answer because all things have become new. You with me? So a new thing, watch me, a new thing, I'm going to focus on this, a new thing that you, that you have to do, a new thing um, that, you, that you do, a new thing that he's making is who you listen to. Because if he's making you new but you're listening to old, we have a problem. So this series is called Speak Lord. Shout speak Lord. speak Lord. Joel 33, 14. For God may speak in one way or in another, say multiple ways. Which means God has multiple ways to speak, yet man does not perceive it. What does this mean? Man is not aware of it, man does not understand it, and man does not properly interpret it. So this message is very simply called, God, is that you? Say, God, is that you? God. Wave at me in the building, wave at me online if you've ever asked that question. Lord, is that you? Lord, is that you? Lord, if it's you, flip the switch. Lord, if it's you, let it rain. Lord, if it's you, let it thunder snow. Lord, if it's you, let the lion at the zoo roar at me while I'm at the house. I mean, like, we, we do a lot of crazy stuff. Watch me. Uh, but let me give you this. Anything that you perceive you're hearing, that you perceive you're sensing, that you're being led. Now, I'm going to deal with these last two, being led or feeling. Because you Christians come up with a lot of unbiblical stuff. I'm just feeling like God wants me to do this. Let me get you together. God doesn't deal in the realm of feelings. So if you feel it, it's probably not him. See how quiet it just got? Watch me. He doesn't speak in a realm that he doesn't deal. He doesn't deal in feelings because feelings will fool you. Because one moment you can feel, watch me, good. The next moment you can feel bad. One moment, y'all ain't going to say nothing? Well, it depends on what stage you're at in your life. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Because one moment you can feel like you're on top of the world. And depending on what stage of life you're in, five minutes later, you can be crying. Which, which... You're like, I don't know why. I just got good news. And then, and then five minutes later, you want to fight. So God doesn't deal in the realm of feelings, okay? But uh, it's me. Or someone says, I'm being led to do this. Okay, well, if you're being led, what's leading you? Who's leading you? I just sense God wants me to do this. There you go again in your feelings. Right? Because, okay, because I, I got you tonight because I hear a lot of Christians saying a lot of stuff that God simply would not endorse because it would make him out to be a liar because it directly contradicts what his word says. I've heard people say, I just heard the Lord told me not to tithe this month. You are a liar. And your mama is one too. He would not contradict what he said. Who are you that he's going to undo what he said and make himself unholy just to come lie to you? Because if he tells you something that's directly contradictory to what he said, this takes away his holiness. And I'm going to tell somebody, he's not going to risk being holy just to come have a private conversation with you. It's quiet in this building. I've heard people say, okay, y'all ready? Let's go here. I've heard people look at somebody married and say, that's mine. You may have had them once, but I got them all the time. 
Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? It's quiet in this building. If y'all would talk, I could move on, but since you won't talk, I'm gonna stay right through here. So I'm just confused because, because you mean to tell me that he is enticing one into an adulterous situation? You mean to tell me that he's tempting you? Well, she shouldn't be walking in front of me like that. Ever did? No, that's you. <laughs> it's quiet in this building. Uh, okay, let's go. It can be one of four. Say one of four. One of four. Number one, here's what most people, and I need to get, I need, please let me help us tonight, okay? Because, because after this month, you're never going to be confused about what's God and what's not. Okay, I said after this month, you're never going to be confused about what's God and what's not. After this month, you're not going to be, Lord, is that you or not? Mm. You're going to be like, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt. I feel it in my bones. I know that 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 I know. <laughs> Number one, it can be you talking to yourself. See how quiet it got? This is real. Y'all, I, I don't know what's going on. Weather change around here. Y'all get quiet. <laughs> okay. And, and here's the deal. Your biggest desire is going to be the loudest. So the reason you keep hearing quit is because you want to quit. So that's why you keep hearing it. Because that's your biggest, that's not God. Your biggest desire, your, your desire. And, and let's just be honest. You're, you're going to have a predilection and a lean toward what's easiest and most painless. So if it's painless to quit, I just keep hearing God saying quit. Your biggest desire is always going to be the loudest. Somebody say, preach, man of God. Psalm 119, 29. Watch the psalmist. Keep me from lying to myself. You lie to you more than the devil lies to you. Because you will, watch me, you will drink the alcoholic, watch me, poison of what it is that you believe is easiest. I don't think God want me to move right now. No, you just are comfortable and lazy. Come on, Tony, I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> I'll pre-record this. They can watch the video. Keep me from lying to myself. Open your mouth, pray that with me. Say, Lord, keep me from lying to myself. To keep, come here, come here. To keep you from lying from yourself. This means God, okay, come here, come here. So let's, let's pretend like, okay, let's pretend like, so you're going to be, you know, him. Just imagine, okay. So you, him. So I'm God. You, 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 and you, him. I'm God. Keep me from lying, try to get there, to myself. God says, I got to keep you away from harming you. Because sometimes your greatest enemy is your enemy. So you like, I'm for the fight. I'm ready to fight. I want to fight. And God is like, do you know that's you over there? So I got to keep you from hurting yourself. I wish you lift your hands and open up your mouth. Say, Lord, keep me from lying to myself. Keep me. So don't think that simply because you felt it, heard it, or sensed it, that is right. Don't think that just because it dropped in your head that it's God. If I, if I had them cook some hamburgers outside right now, you'd be like, I just sense that I'm hungry. You smelled it. You sensed it. Which is why we walk by faith, not by sight. What's that? A sense. So we walk by faith, not by senses. Because what I sense will make me enticed to something that might not be right. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. All right, let's go. Number two. What, what could it be? Somebody else's opinion. You ready? For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Look at the next part. Next part. Let's go. They will follow their own desires and will look for people on social media, in their friends, in their circle, on YouTube, on daytime television who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. So just because it's what you want to hear doesn't mean that it's right. You wanted to hear it wasn't no good man to justify why you like the woman by the well. 
You had five, and the one you got ain't yours now. Because that justifies it. I just, you acting like a dude. You got dude energy. I don't want to love. I don't want to love. I don't want to love. I ain't trying to get it. I ain't trying to have no feelings. Okay, this is... So what type of opinions will he use? People who you deem to be important or people who you deem, listen carefully, or people who you've given a seat of influence. So often he'll use, watch me, who to call Jesus crazy? His own family. Now, if he was led by their opinions, he would have said, maybe I'm not God. Maybe I'm not the Messiah. Because my brothers don't think I am. My mama don't think I am. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Who threw Joseph in the pit? His own brothers. But watch me, which tells me if you're going to be a curse breaker, you got to learn how to hear the opinion and keep it moving. You got to tell them, baby, say what you're going to say, but it's for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Which means if you can't give me some Bible to back up what you're saying, keep that mess to yourself. Number three, number three, who could it be? I'm halfway there. Number three, who could it be? Satan talking. And how does he talk? He's good. He's a smooth operator. Coast to coast, L.A. to Chicago. I don't know what the rest of what she's saying, but all I know is when that song came on, I was ready to go to sleep. I was like, this, this is too, this is too, I need something with some bass in it. This is too, too smooth for me. Okay. You ready? So what does Satan do? He's going to mix a little fact to get you to believe. And then he's going to put a lie in there. He mixes facts and fiction together. That's what he did with Eve. He tells Eve, he tells Eve, he tells Eve. So let me just teach you for a moment. Can I teach you? You're being quiet enough, so I'll teach. Here it is. In Genesis, in the Genesis, the Bible says that the serpent, serpent there doesn't mean snake, it means deceiver. The imagery of Satan is like a snake because that's how he moves. He slithers, he doesn't walk, which means he'll come in the room and you not know he's there. Ah! Come on. You, you won't know that he's there because you don't hear footsteps. He slithers. In other words, he's sly. In other words, watch me. He'll come in and watch me come in undetected and unnoticed, which is why when you sense something is off sometimes, you need to say, wait a minute. Something is off in this atmosphere. Something is off in my house. Something is off in my job. Something has slithered in here, and I need to take authority. Matter of fact, let's do it right now. Father, we take authority over this atmosphere. We take authority over our homes, over our minds, over our bodies, over our families, over our jobs. And we, the Bible says, and men shall clap their hands and hiss the devil out of his place. I need you to clap your hands as loud as you can in this building and online. And as you clap your hands, put the right scripture up, please. And as you clap your hands, you're going to hiss the enemy out of his place. Come on, somebody say, Satan, get out, get out. Come on, say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Lay your hands on yourself, say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Put a praise behind that right there. Glory to God. Glory to God. You can be seated. He slithers. So, so watch me. The imagery of Satan is like a snake. But in the gardens, the word serpent means deceiver. He's not a snake. What else is a snake? A snake is double-tongued. Which means he's talking out of both sides. Okay. On one side is this. On another side... It's this. Serpent literally means, pay attention, it literally means deceiver. So the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, the deceiver. And what does he do? He speaks to Eve. Now, for those of you that have this imagery that there was this snake that was coiled around a tree, be like, hey, Eve, what's up? That's not what happened. Genesis 19 teaches us that whenever angels appear in the earth, look at me, look at me, they appear as human beings. Satan, watch me, is a title, not a name. It means the adversary, Hasetan. Well, watch me, the name of the angel that he is, I'm not going to jump into that because that's too deep for wisdom and live Bible study. But he's, watch me, he still sits in the seat of an angel. This is why in Job chapter 1, the Bible says, in the sons of God, which means the archangels, they came and gathered around the throne for a meeting. Well, how did he get access if he's no longer an angel? Let's go. His role is to be the prosecuting angel. Just like if you look at the government, the government has the, uh, the federal government, you have the president, all right? But then you have the attorney general whose role is to be the defender of the law as it relates to the nation. <laughs> 
which means their job is to bring charges against individuals that violate the law. So this is why, watch me, he stands before a God, Revelation 12, accusing you before God day and night. What's that? A prosecutor. He brings up all of your mess, all of your drama, everything you've spoken, and he accuses you to God, who is a what? A judge, to try to get a judgment against you. But this is why the book says in Daniel that judgment was made in the ruling and the favor of the saints of the Most High God, and the time came that they might possess the kingdom. Let me make it real simple for you. God looked at everything the devil tried to bring up about you and say, watch me, case dismissed. I he said, I'm going to pay the price on the cross, and you'll never ever be able to use their sins against them. The case has been dismissed. Now, I need you to find three people in this building. Give them a fist bump. Type it in the comments. Say, the case has been dismissed. The case has been dismissed. Come on, I need you to go to three people. Please follow my instructions in the building. The case has been dismissed. He heard all the charges. He heard all the evidence. And he said, but that's still my son. And that's still my daughter. And I'm not giving up on them. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So pay attention. So pay attention. Look at me. Look at me. So Satan, he's in the garden. And Genesis 19 teaches us angels appears. What did I just teach you? Men. So when Eve is talking to the serpent, she's talking to a man. For years, you had the image that it was a snake around a tree with an apple. Let me get you together. One no apple. Fruit in scripture is a Hebrew idiom for sex. And she took of the fruit. Pay attention. This is why if you can discipline your body, watch me, you got discipline over everything else. Because the moment that you can take discipline and control over your body, yada, yada, nothing ever can control you. You ready? You ready? Be fruitful. It's a Hebrew idiom. Got it? So Satan mixes a little truth and fiction. He says, um, now notice he goes to her, not Adam. Adam was the one that was told, don't mess with this fruit. Let that pass on by. Don't turn your head. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me tonight. Y'all ain't gonna talk? He said, he said, don't mess with this fruit. Okay, uh, he goes to Eve. When he goes to Eve, has God really said that you shall not eat from the tree that is in the midst of the garden? And Eve goes, my God, and Satan is like, well, he knows that in the day you eat of it, you will become like him, knowing the difference between good and evil. If you read the rest of the chapter, the Lord actually says, and she has become like us. Which means that was a fact. So that was a fact. So then, Bishop, where's the fiction? Here's the fiction. He's trying to keep you from something. He doesn't want you to have something. God is trying to keep you from having a good time. This is why you have Christians that say, I'm going to just live my life right now and then I'm going to get serious about God. As if living for God keeps you from having a good time and a good life. I wish you look at somebody and say, you can have a good time and love God. The devil is a lie. Baby, you can have a good time and love you some God. Matter of fact, that's the best type of time to have. Why? It's stressful not knowing who your baby daddy is. It's stressful not knowing where your next meal is going to come from. It, that's stressful. Living for God is not stressful. It's stressful running to the clinic. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. You should have spoke to me. No, now it's going to get real. Should have said Amen. It's stressful going from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. Heartbreak to heartbreak to heartbreak. You've been at the Heartbreak Hotel for 20 years. You have a permanent corner room. That's stressful. Living for God. Somebody say, that's the time of my life. I'll know by your praise on three. If you living for God has been, watch me, it ain't been easy. But it, watch me, but it's been way better than when you were doing it your way. On three, release the praise. One, two, three. Shout right there. You gotta go with me. You ready? All right. 
So what does he do? Y'all with me? What does he do? He makes fact and fiction together. So what happens? Now Eve is confused. And when you get confused, you're about to do something catastrophic. I rebuke confusion. You will not have cloudy thinking. You will not have cloudy, watch me, processing. Come on, lift your hands, open your mouth, say, and I rebuke confusion in my mind. So now Eve is confused. She's like, well, this makes sense to me. And what does the Bible say? And she looks at the fruit that's good to the eyes. It's like, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. So she's living by her senses. And he gets her to disobey. And then she gets, now I could go deep, but this ain't Bible study. Then she gets Adam, her husband, who was with her. So what they doing? <laughs> See, some of you, things were fine until you invited others. I'll move on. I'll move on. I'm, I'm just, let's. No, I can't, I can't stay there. I'm going to be there all night. <laughs> you ready? Watch me. So, so then God, God comes down, and God says, what is this? What's going on? The Bible says the eyes of Adam and Eve are open. They see that they're naked. They see what they'd never seen before that they were never supposed to see. Because when they walked by faith, they didn't never had to see it. The things that when you give in to lies that you see that you were never supposed to see, that when you see it, it ends up changing the way you see everything. But had you just kept walking by faith, you never would have had to see that. Had you not been disobedient, you never would have had to see that. The reason you got trust issues now is because you saw what you didn't need to see, and so now you see it in everything that you see. So now, watch me. So he deceives her. So he gets her to disobey. Pay attention. He couldn't take it from her. She had to give it up. And I could spend time right there too, but I won't. Adam had to give up authority. He had to give up authority. Everybody look at me. This is why in the garden, look at me, everybody look at me. This is why Adam gave up authority in the garden. Where's the, one of the first places Jesus said blood after being circumcised as a child? In the garden. Why? Because he had to go back to where Adam gave up authority, shed some blood so he could buy that authority back for us. Because wherever Jesus shed his blood, he was purchasing something. I need you to high-five somebody. We're almost done. And just high-five them and say, say, you have authority. All right? So whenever the enemy's talking, he's going to even use the word against you. He'll tell you, how you going to go to that church when you sinning? How you going to watch online when you sinning? Oh, I got you. How you going to serve and your life ain't all the way together? He'll, he'll try to use the word against you. Yeah. Why are you praying the way you just talk to your kids? How do you think God going to hear you? Wave at me. Wave at me if you've experienced that. Because he's a condemner, right? And a condemner, here's what they do. They throw their rocks and they hide their hands. So he'll get you in condemnation. He'll mix it. And so now you're confused. You're like, should I even pray? Because I messed up. I don't know. Maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. Watch me. I just need you to hear me loud and clear. First John chapter 1. If anyone, watch me. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive you. I just need you to lift your hand and say, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Here's number four. Number four. God talking. B-I-N-G-O. 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 Jesus was his name. Oh. All right. All right. But look, when God's talking, he's not going to contradict his word. So a lot of y'all are looking for voices when you need to be looking for verses. I'm in it. God, just speak to me. Speak to me, Lord. Just say something. And then he'll post a reel with a scripture for you and you'll be like that's good that's good type this in the comments it is so this is good let me send this to my friend god speak god speak god is like ninja i just that was for you most christians listen to the word to weaponize it not to apply it 
They listen to it to send it to their cousin and say, he talking to you. He said, no, it was to you first. You got to hear me. When I'm preaching, listen, listen, when I'm, listen, I'm talking to me first. God talking, he's never going to contradict his word, his written word, what he's already said. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all still with me? Okay, now let me give you the scripture. Let's go back to Satan real quick. I want to give you the scripture. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So when Satan is speaking, he'll disguise it as something else. Y'all ever saw them disguise? disguise? Let me see your glasses. So he doesn't do a good job. Because basically, <laughs> I, don't. I can see my future. I'm just messing with you. This isn't a great disguise, right? You can still tell it's me. Okay, but, here, but here's the deal. But here's the deal. But if you haven't been trained, one little difference will be, will, will, one little difference will create deception. He disguises himself as an angel of light. The word angel there, say teach bishop. The word angel there is the Greek word pomen, which means pastor. Which means you'll be assigned to one, but it'll get you to, to listen to one that ain't the one you're assigned to. Let's move. Uh, uh, God talking. He won't contradict his word. See, a lot of y'all, y'all got these prayer partners who are not submitted to anybody. Go back. Okay, I'm going to teach. It's my mic. It is. <laughs> Where's the lie? You, you, got, you got these prayer partners who aren't submitted to anybody. I don't believe in church. I don't, I don't believe in, I don't believe you need all of that. I just, you know, yanda ba 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 Okay. They've disguised themselves as an angel of light. They've disguised themselves as this person that's a person of light. Watch me. And their whole agenda is to mix fact and fiction to get you off. They don't call themselves witches. No, they call themselves group leaders. I ain't going to say nothing. Because they, they're not submitted to anybody. They, they have no authority in their life. They have no pastor. They have no man of God. I just really don't believe in all of that. Okay. You're an angel. You describe yourself or disguise yourself as an angel of light. It's quiet. And that's what Satan does. He disguises himself to make him look like he's light when he's really darkness. Look like he's a sheep when he's really a wolf. Okay, number four, God talking. Y'all getting this tonight? Yes, it's quiet in this building. Look at the scripture in Matthew. Scripture says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my what? Words will by no means pass away. Say plural. plural. There's two words for word. Uh, the first word, and I want to get into this tonight. We're just going to open it up and we're going to move on. Say speak, Lord. All right, the first uh, word that you see for words uh, is this word. It's the word logos. Logos is God's word, listen carefully, including numbers, signs, and even wonders. Because what those things are, the meaning of those things comes from his written word. Think of logos like Legos. It's how you build. Logos are like Legos. That's how I build. Okay, look at the scripture. Psalm 119, 105. It's time to shout. Let's go. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, which means when I don't know where to step, I need a logos. When I don't know what path I should be on, I need a logos. Come on, open up your mouth. Say, Lord, I need a word. I need a word. Come on, say it like he's about to give you one in the next 10 minutes. Say, Lord, I need a word. Your logos is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In other words, it makes it clear my next step, and it makes it clear, listen carefully, the path that I'm supposed to be on. Your logos does this for me. Your word does this for me. This is, look at me, this is the primary way that God speaks. He speaks through what he already spoke. He speaks through what he already spoke. This is why if you'll notice anything I say, I always, always give you scripture to back it up because my opinion will pass away. Social media will pass away. Mark can flip that button like he did today if, his, if, if he mad at somebody. Watch me. 
But his word is never going to pass away. Matter of fact, I feel like preaching right through here. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Which means if I want to get closer to God, it's not through just sitting and meditating. No, I get into his word. Because he is his word. So the more I get into his word, watch me, the closer I get to him. And the more I get into his word, the more the lamp comes on. The more I get into his word, the more the light comes to my path. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do next and pay attention it's a lamp to my feet say steps okay he's gonna give you what you need to take the next step here's what you want you want step 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 you're like lord just tell me everything that's gonna happen in the next 10 years god is like you ain't done what i said for the next 10 minutes so let's just take baby let me back that thing. Come on back here. And I'm going to give you your next step. And watch me. Look at me. Because some of you are like, he's just not saying anything new. Because you actually haven't taken that step. So why give you another step if you haven't taken the first step? Let's go. Why give you another instruction if you haven't followed the previous instruction you ready so sometimes you're wanting God Lord just to speak and he's like for what you haven't done what I said so what is the purpose of giving you something new Lord I just need confirmation how many more confirmations do you need the airport only give you one Depending on your airline, you might have to pay for that. <laughs> oh, you want to come for me? Oh, you want to get on the plane? That's an extra $35. You wanted a pilot on your plane? Shoot, you should have told us that, baby. That's another $175. But we'll put it in a bundle package so you can get... <laughs> I've got low-cost airfare. <laughs> You wanted an a, a airline a steward? You want, oh, you wanted a flight attendants on the flight? Shoot. That's an extra fee. <laughs> oh, you wanted us to put gas on the plane. <laughs> we thought you was just going to push it. <laughs> That's an extra fee. All right, everybody look at this. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say the name of that airline, but... Just remember that God's always taking you forward and just, I'm not going to do it. I'm so petty, but see how the Holy Ghost has put a guard over my mouth? Because I don't want you to go into the wrong frontiers. I want you to keep moving forward. Go to the back. Go pre to the previous. Go to the logos. 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 And I don't want you to get the wrong spirit. They don't even come here no more. And because we have people from everywhere. We love everybody at every airline. No, I have to say that. No, 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 no. We do. No, we really do. We really do. I'm just saying something I saw on TikTok. Listen. Um, <laughs> TikTok said it, okay? Right, come on, y'all. Come on, be spiritual. Let's go. We got to go. Is God's word including numbers? Numbers speak, and the meaning of those numbers comes from his logos. Two is the biblical number of witness. Four is the biblical number of creativity. Six is the biblical number of man. Seven is the biblical number of shalom, completion, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking, all is well. Eight is the biblical number of a new beginning. Nine is the number of birthing. Ten is the number of divine perfection. Eleven is the number of dysfunction. Twelve is the number of divine government. Thirteen is the number of betrayal. You ready? Okay. All right. Bishop, where are you getting these definitions from? Well, what the numbers mean come from logos. Because there's a pattern that's established with the number. Signs, what the sign means. I'm gonna, one of our pop-ups, I'm going to teach you what this upcoming, this upcoming eclipse is all about. Because it has a spiritual significance. Say, this one's spiritual. So the Bible says that when Jesus, you ready? I want to take you out real quick. Can I take you out real fast? And then we got to move on. So the Bible says that when Jesus was in the midst of crucifixion, the Bible says that darkness covered the earth. And the Bible says that the earth split, earthquake. Oh, 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 
So Monday, darkness is going to cover the earth. Yesterday, there was a... Okay, yeah, this is... All right, let's move on. 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 Okay. Y'all yeah, with me? Okay. All right. No. no let's go back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you own it, though. God's words including numbers, signs, and wonders. Okay? So in this series, I'm going to teach you how the Logos is speaking to you. Say, he's already spoken through a verse. Okay, here's the next way that he speaks. Rhema, and this is your pastor. Rhema word, logos means word, rhema means word. Both of those are Greek words. It's what God's saying to you through what he said. And he does this primarily through your pastor. Look at the screen and look at the scripture. Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what to do, how to do it, why to do it, when to do it. He says, I will give you this, and their whole assignment is to feed you. Hear me, my assignment is to make sure you never leave hungry. You got it? My assignment is to make sure that you never, watch me, and it builds line upon line, precept upon precept. It amazes me because sometimes people will get on it like, how he got a word every day? That's, watch me, that's because I stay full so I can feed. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me because you can't pour from an empty well. Let's go. You can't pour from an empty place. And for some of y'all, let that be revelation because you feel wore out because you're trying to pour from an empty place. You feel wore out because you're trying to do it from an empty place. But I pray on this first Wednesday of this second quarter, this first Wednesday of this fourth month, that God give you a refill. Lift your hands, open up your mouth, say, Lord, fill me up. Say, until I overflow. Put a praise behind that in the building and online. Let's go. Next way that he speaks. So, logos, rhema. Next, prayer, praise, and worship. Say prayer, praise, and worship. Okay, so this is important because sometimes, one, y'all know we are praying, we are praying people. Now, we don't just pray on Mondays. We pray all the time, but Mondays is when we focus on prayer. But we pray in every day, okay? Every day you're going to get videos of prayer. You're going to get videos of scripture every day. Okay, but he's speaking through these three things. Look at the screen. If you go to Acts chapter 13, verse 2, while they were worshiping um, the Lord and fasting, read the last part. When they were doing what? Worshiping and fasting. God said something. So watch me. During prayer, praise, and worship, it's not the time to just watch them sing. It's the time. Watch me. You don't even have to know the song. Somebody be like, oh, okay, I don't know this song. You ain't got to know the song. Watch me. Because you're not singing to them. You're not singing to your neighbor. Watch me. You're singing to your God. Which means, watch me, even if I don't know the song, even if I don't like the song, watch me, even if it is no song, my, my hands go up, my mouth opens. Because when I begin to pray, praise, and worship, God's about to speak. He's going to say something. Sometimes you'll lift your hands and worship and all God needed to say was, I love you. You'll lift your hands and worship and all God needed to say was, I got you. You'll lift your hands and worship and all God needed to say is, it won't always be like this. On the count of three, open up your mouth and shout, speak, Lord. One, two, three. It's the next way that he speaks. Through something or someone that you least expect. What I love about God is that he'll use somebody and you'll be like, you ever looked at somebody who said something so good, you were like, you couldn't have said it. I don't know. Okay. In Numbers 22, God uses, and I'll teach you more on this uh, in this series. God uses a donkey. Um, in scripture, a, a donkey was known as an ass. A male donkey was known as a jackass. A female donkey was known as a jenny ass. All right? Pay attention. That's, that's what, what it meant. Now, that's old King James. Now, pay attention. One day, there's a prophet, say a man of God. He's getting ready to go do something that he should not do. And sometimes when you're strong, watch me, you have to be careful because in your strength, you're going to have that same strength in disobedience. I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to do this. Where are the honest people in the building and online where you can say that, watch me, when you was doing wrong and you were doing something you shouldn't have did, you didn't just have do it. You did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. But now there is there no condemnation 
Okay, so he's, he's riding his donkey. In the Hebrew culture, a donkey was like a luxury automobile. So he's riding his, pick your, your favorite car, pick them, say them. Audi, Benz, talk. Bentley, Aston Martin, Lamborghini. Y'all don't like cars? Rolls Royce, Honda. Man, Honda making some good products these days. I saw something the other day, I said, that's a Honda? God, dog, I said, come on, Honda. Oh, coming up in the world. Here's the deal. So he's riding his luxury automobile to go do his assignment. But his assignment wasn't his assignment. It was an assignment, watch me, that he gave himself that God never gave him. Mm. Some of y'all are worried about stuff that you're not supposed to be doing because God never intended for you to do it in the first place. But I'll leave that alone. He's going to do something that he shouldn't do. It's disobedience. You ready? And so the Lord, watch me, the Bible says that a death angel comes that's ready to slay He's standing here, Balaam is riding his donkey, and he's coming down the way. And as he's coming down the walkway, watch me, the angel, watch me, the donkey can see the angel, but Balaam can't. Because sometimes when you've been around God for a long time, and you've been around church for a long time, you begin to make it common. And you make God common, and you make God's voice common. So sometimes he's got to use something or someone you wouldn't expect, watch me, because you ain't listening no more. Y'all ain't going to say nothing? Sometimes you can get so used to getting good word, watch me, that you stop listening to it. Because what's a luxury meal if you have that all the time? So, what ends up happening? So, Balaam is riding the donkey, and the donkey, it's a female donkey, she can see the angel, and his sword is drawn. The, the donkey stops. Balaam hits her. This happens a few times. The donkey turns her neck around. Y'all already know where this is going. She turns her neck around and looks at Balaam and says, I've been with you for 10 years. Have I ever acted like this before? He talks back to the donkey and says, well, no, you haven't. She says, so don't you think if I'm acting like this, it must be something going on that I'm trying to warn you of. And I'm here to tell somebody, you got to open. <laughs> you got to open your eyes. Touch your neighbor and say, God's trying to say something. God's trying to say something. God's trying to say something. Oh, I like it when stuff like that happens because that tells me I'm in the right vein. That tells me I'm touching the right area. Would you touch somebody close to you and say, God's about to speak? Say, God's about to say something loud. And he's going to get your attention. Let's go. Let's go. So, so I like when stuff like that happens. Look at me. I like it. I like it. So, somebody say, we in there now. So, so, so. Then at that moment, God opens Balaam's eyes. Because sometimes you, you can think your eyes are open, but they're not. Say, Lord, open my eyes. At that moment, Balaam can see the sword drawn with the angel ready to slay him. Had he want, went any further, hear me, had he went any further... The angel was going to slay him because he was about to disobey and he was going to go tell a king how to curse the Hebrews. Because he got so, look at me, he got so frustrated with his assignment that he decided he wanted another one. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me today. Ah. So the Lord says, had your donkey not stopped you, I would have certainly killed you. He said, he said, so while you hitting on the donkey, she's the reason you're still alive. And I want to tell somebody in the building and no line, while you frustrated with who keeps saying something to you, they might be the only reason that you're still alive. While you're frustrated about who keeps checking you, they might be the only reason you're still alive. While you're frustrated, somebody keeps calling you to a higher level of excellence. That might be the only reason that you are still alive. You ready? Balaam was not expecting this. So what does this mean? God can use somebody or something you would not expect for him to use. 
he'll use your child to speak to you, parent. And you'll be tripping and your child will be like, mama, we just need to pray. You right. You right. You right. You right. Okay. Let's go to the next one. We're almost done. Y'all getting this tonight? Next, he can speak to an angel. In Genesis 19, you've heard me reference angels appear as humans. The word angel means messenger. That's why in the book of Revelation, the leader of every church, he called them an angel because he said that's a messenger to that region, a messenger to that city, a messenger to that movement. So God can use a person to speak, and they're not going to show up. Look, these images we have of angels with wings and all of that, the only place that exists is in Western Christianity. Because if you look at how the Bible describes them when they're not on the earth, it uses some very vivid imagery, eyes, seven eyes, and all this here. It's imagery. It's allegory. Pay attention. It just means that they see everything, and if they're seven, they see to completion. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's allegory. Y'all still with me? Okay. So, so God can use an angel to speak. And the Bible says we entertain angels unaware. Able somebody say, I might be your angel. Sometimes, sometimes I remember, I remember a few years ago, um, somebody showed up, and they were working for a company, and we began to do business with them because we were, going, we were going to be doing some promotions for one of my books. And the person showed up, and, and then within 30 days, they disappeared. And one of my long-term team members who's watching, one of my long-term team members, we said, what happened to this woman? She just disappeared. She just disappeared. And the Holy Ghost said, I sent her as an angel to you to be a messenger to you to remind you of who you were because you let your region talk you out of who you were. You let your city lullaby you put you to sleep. He said, so I sent somebody that, watch me, once her assignment was done, watch me, we could not find this woman. I ain't gonna talk. We, we couldn't, the numbers didn't work, the website was gone, the profiles were gone, the company didn't exist. You call another person, they're like, who is that? We're like, are you joking? We just, you were just here in my building. What are you talking about? Because he sent an angel who, who their whole assignment was to remind me of who I was. Because sometimes, watch me, you can go through things and you can walk through things that you just get used to surviving instead of thriving. You just think, well, I guess this is just what it's going to be when God says, but I've got so much more for you. Come on, y'all, let's preach. 2024 is your year of more, and God will do more for you. God will do more through you, and God will do more in you. Lift your hands, open your mouth, say, this is my year of more. Hallelujah. All right, let's get to these last two. 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 The next one. Some dreams and visions. Say some dreams and visions. All right. Um, if you look at the screen, Job 33 and 15 says this. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and he seals their instructions. Say teach, man of God. In a dream, in a vision of the night. So a dream is when you're asleep. A vision is when you're awake. You may call it a daydream. The Bible calls it a vision. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men. I did a whole series called Dreams. You should go watch. That teaches you about the different levels and stages of dreams, right? And it teaches you how God speaks. He says, while you're slumbering on your bed, look at me, then he opens your ears. In other words, God says, I couldn't speak to you when you were conscious. Because some of y'all, look at your neighbor say, I need to tell you something. Say, don't be offended. Say, don't be mad. Say, but sometimes you talk too much. Just sometimes. So God says, you ran your mouth all day, so I couldn't say nothing. So when you went to sleep and you get into the transition of sleep between the deepest level and going back to the, the first level of the three levels of sleep that we have. God says, I'm going to open your ears and I'm going to seal instruction. I'm going to speak to you in your dreams. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and I will do it through your dreams. 95% of your dreams are you purging something. Watch me. Have you ever had a dream and you woke up and you woke up sweating, fearful, like something was going on? Watch me. This was God saying, I need to get this fear out of you. 
while you're asleep because I don't have time for you to be fearful when you're conscious and awake. You ever had a dream where you felt like you were fighting and even felt like they call it sleep paralysis when you got up, you felt like you couldn't move? Because sometimes, watch me, God says, I need to develop your gladiator in your sleep. <laughs> I need to develop your warrior in your sleep because you're going to have to fight some fights when you get up and I don't need you figuring it out. I need you to know exactly what to do. I need you to just touch somebody close to you and say, and he's speaking, and he's speaking, and he's speaking. Okay? All right, watch this last one. Watch this last one. I just want to introduce you to these. A storm. You're going to have fun with this one. The Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Wow. Wow. Sometimes you're like, God, speak, God, speak, God, speak. He's like, look at all what you're going through. He said, you don't hear me? You don't hear me? Because most of the times when we're in a storm, the storm becomes a distraction. And we're not saying, God, where are you at in the storm? We're rebuking the storm, which means you're rebuking his voice. If you say, Lord, I don't want to go through this, Lord, get me out of this. He's like, but I'm talking. So instead of asking me to end the storm, instead say, God, I need to hear your voice loud and clear while I'm in the storm. In the building and online, would you just open up your mouth and make this declaration and say, he's speaking to me right now. For every person where you got some storms going on in your life, I want you to open your mouth and worship God for five seconds. Why? Because he's about to speak clearly through your storm through your trial, through your tribulation, through what's going on, through your challenge. He's speaking. He's speaking. Come on, shout, speak, Lord. Shout it again, shout, speak, Lord. Let's recap real quick, real quick. Number one, logos, say through his word. Number two, rhema, say through my pastor. Number three, prayer, praise, and worship. Say prayer, praise, and worship. Number four, through something or someone you least expect. Say that. Next, through an angel. Say through an angel. Next, some dreams and visions. Say some dreams and visions. Next, a storm. Say a storm. He's speaking through all of those things. He's not silent. He's a very present help. So he's speaking. He's not silent. Heads bowed, eyes closed in this building under the line. If you need to become a Christian, tonight's your night. He can't speak if, clearly if you're not his. So tonight, if you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord or be sure wherever you're at. On the count of three, in the building, you're going to slip your hand up online. Do the hand wave emoji, you're going to say it's me. He's not mad. He's not upset. He's not trying to beat you up. He's not trying to beat you down. He loves you, and he loves you with an unconditional love. Black, white, tall, short, everybody included, nobody excluded. If that's you tonight in the building, slip your hand up online, do the hand wave emoji, or say it's me. One, two, three. Respond wherever you're at, in this building or online. Church, we're a church that celebrates people coming to the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody, pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for your love for me. I confess it with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that you are my Lord and my Savior. Give me the grace to be a faithful Christian from this day forward. If I fail or if I fall, give me the grace to get right back up again. Today is the beginning of the rest of my life. You're speaking. Let me hear you clearly. You're speaking. Let me obey. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, guys, you just prayed that prayer for the first time. Recommitted yourself to the Lord. Take your phone out. Scan the QR code that's on the screen. Or text Harvest to 55498. Enter the option for salvation. When you do that, we're going to shoot you a message right away to show you how to make Christianity your lifestyle, not just a hobby. Some of you are saved, but you don't have a shepherd. You can live in Denver, Atlanta, anywhere across America and around the world, and you can be a part of the Harvest Church family. We'd love for you to do that. The majority of harvests have never been in a building, and to God be the glory for us being a hybrid church um, that we can reach people everywhere, all for God's glory. Glory. Did you get some out of this tonight? How many of you wave at me, and, and, and this is no shame, and this is not a bad thing. Wave at me if there's some areas of your life that are a little stormy right now. A little stormy, a little stormy, a little stormy. Wave at me online. Everybody look at me. 
He's speaking. All you need to do, and I'm going to teach you this on Sunday, say, speak, Lord. I hear, and I will obey. In Jesus' name. For some of you, the storm, listen carefully, the storm is not punishment. The storm is an usher. What does an usher do? It gets you to the right place at the right time. It gets you to the right seat. For some of you, you wouldn't do it if the storm didn't come. You wouldn't cut them off if a storm didn't come. You wouldn't move differently if a storm didn't come. I dare you on three to just holler, thank God for my storm. One, two, three. Put a praise behind that right there. Hallelujah. I want you to take your communion elements out. Take your communion elements out. Pull that first layer back. Let me get you to stand with me in the building end of line. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, He held up unleavened bread. We call it the Last Supper. It was really what's called a Passover Seder. He was honoring the Feast of Passover, which starts, say, that's this month. He's sitting, and they're eating the Passover. And he holds up up bread, and he says, this is my body. This will be broken and bruised for you. For my online family, you can order communion elements. We'll ship them to you all totally free. You just got to pay your shipping. Scan that QR code. Father, as a bishop in your church, now transform these elements to your blood and to your body. In Jesus' name we pray. You can receive the bread. Peel that next layer back. Lift it up towards heaven. He suffered, he bled, and he died. And on Sunday, I taught you exactly all of the places he shed his blood. And every place he shed his blood, what was he doing? Buying something for us. Father, thank you that your blood covers us, it washes us, it makes us clean, it makes us brand new. On this first Wednesday of this second quarter of this new month, we say, clean slate, fresh start. I'm covered. I'm forgiven in Jesus' name. You can drink the juice. Hallelujah. 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 Can you just release your sound of worship right there for just a few seconds? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Listen, if you came in late and you weren't able to give, I want you to get your giving ready. If you're going to sow the seal, you're going to get that ready. Here's our seed tonight. It's 38 for Job 38 and 1. And here's what you're going to just call this seed. Speak, Lord. All this month, that's what we're going to do. We're going to hear him speak. You're going to see that he's been speaking in certain areas. You said he ain't saying nothing. You're going to hear that there's areas where he's been very clear, but you just weren't, you just didn't know. You weren't perceptive. You weren't aware. Your life is not left up to chance. Say, he's speaking. 38's our seed if you're going to sow the seal. How can you sow the seal? Use the cash app, dollar sign, Bishop Foreman with the number two. PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Givelify. That's available. The email is hello at harvestchurch.church. Hello at harvestchurch.church. You can also scan the QR code that's there on the screen or even mail it, P.O. Box 441004. You say, Bishop, I don't have 38. Get as close as you can to it. Get as close as you can to it. And you're just going to call this seed, Speak, Lord. I just sold using text to give. Text them out to 84321. Tap Enter Harvest Church. When you see the V, that's where you want to be. I love you. I've told you three times today because I want you to know that you have a shepherd that loves you. Pray for me. I leave tomorrow to go to Memphis, Tennessee, to um, eulogize uh, one of the uh, uh, last, uh, or one of the matri- I don't say last, one of the matriarchs in our family. And uh, so, uh, what was it, 2007 or 2008? Uh, we did the same for we used to, we called her Mimi, and she's gone. And so now uh, Grace. If I say Grace, 
Uh, she is now transitioned, and uh, and she is. I get. I always get the family lineage mixed up. So she's just in my family, okay? Because I'll be like great, 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 and it was great this, and just I always get it mixed up. So uh, I'll be going to do that on Thursday and Friday. All right. Let you give it to the Lord in the building and the line. Thank you for those of you that have um, keep me praying. How many of you pray for me? Wave at me. How many you pray for me? Thank you for your prayers. Always keep, as the old school saints used to say, keep me lifted. Always keep me lifted uh, in prayer. God has been good to us, and I'm excited about our future. Somebody say, we are victorious. Come on, lift your giving to the Lord in the building and the line. Say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I sow to seal the word that I've heard. Speak, Lord. I will hear. I will obey. Everything I need. You're speaking. You're bringing clarity. In Jesus' name, amen. Masters are passing here at Grape Street. If you're using a digital giving method, you can do that. Let's do it together, everybody. Love God, love people, and love life. I'll be down front in just a few moments to meet and greet you. To meet and greet you. To meet and greet you right down front in just a few moments. Go on the shalom of God. Hug two or three people on your way out. Just tell them, say, I'm excited about your quarter. It's going to be amazing. Go on the shalom.